Um, this is going to be your, uh, your second solo album. Um, why now? Well, we were on tour last summer. Um, it was a very big tour. Uh, we had had three band albums in a row and uh, with Keep the Faith, Crossroads, and then These Days. And it was obvious that I needed something new to say. And in saying that, I, I felt uh, the way to do it was going to be on my own. Um, because all the band had to talk about was how wonderful everything is. You know, it's just, it's huge. It's beyond our wildest dreams. It kept getting bigger. And what else is there to say other than life is good? Where, in my own personal voice, walking away from it, having a new experience or two, um, you could be a little more introspective. You know, you could start saying things about yourself that not necessarily the voice of the band, but, you know, the voice of the individual. Sure, sure. And then how do you actually go, go about separating um, writing, as I say, with, you know, writing a band album compared to, say, writing, uh, writing this album? Well, when Richie and I write together, it's neither his or my voice, it's our voice. And, uh, you know, even if I write a song by myself for the band, inevitably the band put its stamp on the record. And it, and it becomes, you know, a band-sounding record. Mm. Where in this, I was willing to experiment to a degree that even if the band were willing to experiment and say, you know, do whatever it is you want, inevitably, excuse me, their playing on the record would mold it, you know, a little further towards center than what I came out with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it... it um, it's good to, to take chances like this because it'll only help when I go back to the band in a year or so that I could say, look, I went this way, blah, blah, and then Richie's making what I gather is a very organic sounding record because Don was is producing. Mm -hmm. um, he'll be able to bring me back the knowledge of that information, mm -hmm. and then we'll meet somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. Because, um, as I say, with, uh, with him using someone like... Uh, Don was, how did you actually go about selecting who you wanted to work with uh, on this album? Well, to tell you the truth, I can't take the credit for it. Um, when uh, my A&R guy, it's been a lot of years since I've listened to an A&R guy, <laughs> uh, I have a new one at the record company, and I really hit it off with the guy. And, you know, he's in a different place than I am. He was going to be talking about a different kind of music than I was familiar with, and he said, you know, let me introduce you to some uh, some guys, you know. And I said, okay, let me hear it. And he played me the Black Grape record. Mm -hmm. And I heard it, and I thought, wow, you know, this this is pretty moving. Mm -hmm. um, so I met with Laroni, and we cut two tracks. And it was, it was great because it was as if I'd never made a record before. Thanks. I went in the studio and went, wow, you know, we're... Where poor Peter Collins on the last band record, Richie and I went, yeah, great, nice idea, you know, and just took over, you know, because it's you did, that was our eighth album, and yeah. it's pretty difficult to tell us, yeah. you know, how yeah. to make a record. Right. Uh, where with Laroni, I went in and went, what are you doing? This is cool, you know, and uh, and that moved me. And so then Dave Stewart, same kind of thing. I just happened to meet him by accident. Um, through Bruce Willis and so you know we got together and we wrote Midnight in Chelsea together as opposed to what the stupid press release that was given to you says yeah yeah uh, Bruce Willis did not co-write the song no, but he introduced Dave Stewart and I okay and uh, and Dave and I then wrote Midnight in Chelsea you know as a narrative to my saying hey man I'm, I'm having a really great time in London and I want to write about it because I mean, when when you listen to the song, it's uh, as I say, it, it, it's it's got a lot of English influence, obviously because of the people involved with it. But it was yeah. this, was that sort of uh, where it just led to, or were were you sort of consciously aware that you're going to get people, um, you know, pointing to you and saying yes, but um, and you were, you know, just that you were, how can I put it, uh, very aware that you wanted to make something different. 
Oh yeah, they were very, they were both very aware that I wanted to make something different. As soon as I went in the studio, I said, "Look, you can't go too far left for me. You know, let's go there, and then if it gets out there, I'll, I'll rein it back in." I think the magic of what Dave and I created, for instance, was that he's so left field and I'm so down the middle that we found that ground and motivated each other. You know, I, I I made something with him that he hasn't made in years because I was able to, I knew how to make records and he knew how to experiment. And so together we made something that, the great thing that excites me about this record is I don't think it sounds like anybody. Mm, you know, a lot of times you jump on a record that sounds like a band, you know, the Nirvana bandwagon, then there's 50 Nirvanas. You know, when Slippery When Wet hit, there was 10 Slippery When Wets. Right. You know, the cool thing is, is Christ, I think I actually stumbled upon something here. You know, again, it wasn't no brilliant move. It was just, let's try it. We'll see what works, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, in working with, uh, with, your, uh, with the sound that you've come up with, um, did you sort of make any conscious effort to sort of separate the image that you had with, uh, bon Jovi to one as being a solo artist? Um, no. No. I, I wouldn't have known how to do that, to tell you the truth. It just, like, when I cut my hair and the Keep the Faith record, everyone thought it was this big conscious move. I just wanted a haircut. You know? <laughs> you know, the honesty, I think, is what, what has kept the band around, is that yeah. people go, well, Christ, at least it's not really thought out. It's just doing what I do, you know? I mean, when I was 21, I made my first record, and I'm 35, you know, things are going to change. If I was making, if this was a band record, I would look and act the way I'm acting right now. It's no big, I don't, I'm not ruled by fear. I won't try to look like I did on Slippery because that was successful. So. And that works for some bands, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that, I can't wait to see Angus Young put the shorts on, but, you know, he's 45 or 48 years old, you know? I, I like it, but mm -hmm. I don't want to be it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a case of you being aware of what's, uh, what is sort of happening around you musically as well, I'm sure. I don't even think about it. No. I just think about me, you know. I, I don't care about the big picture. I don't care about what sells records. This might not sell five records, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But I have no idea. All I know is I made a record I liked. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that you used Anton Corbain to do the photography on the yeah. on best of. You've used him again. Um, oh, yeah, and keep the faith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. What part does does he play besides doing the photography? Are you going to be using him video-wise and things like that? No, I'm not going to make videos. I made a film instead, and it's all done. Every video, every every part of this project has been done by a guy named Mark Pellington. It's already finished for the whole record. Okay. Okay. But um, Anton was the first photographer I think I ever worked with that was truly... <sighs> what can I say to complemented properly more than an image maker but a an image breaker i guess you'd call him you know i mean he he captures things that are amazing i i shot with bruce weber and then shot with anton a week later and i thought bruce weber made the, like the great pictures and i said oh here's obviously the album cover until Anton shot, and I said, Jesus Christ, it's the same guy a week later, it looks like two different people. Mm -hmm. And Anton, no doubt in my mind, is, is the coolest, most productive photographer I've ever worked with. Yeah, he, he seems he seems to have that label, to say he's uh, he's done some great things with, with a lot of artists, as, oh, well, yeah. as far as imaging is concerned, I mean, to say you can go back a lot, but uh, to say, going back to Destination Anywhere, um, are you sort of appealing to are you sort of appealing to anyone on this album? You know, anyone in particular? Are you looking sort of... Nope. Not? <laughs> nope. Just me. Just me. You know, I mean, just me. The only thing, I, the only thing I'd ask of anyone who likes the band uh, or doesn't like the band and, and would consider listening to it is don't judge it. Mm. You know, it's like, as I wrote in the title track, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just going and I'm inviting you to come along. And that's all I, I, I'll ask of them. So, Public. so if if you sort of had to sum up, is uh, if you had to sum the album up, would you? What would you say? It's uh, what does it say about where you are now, sort of um, as a musician, as a, as a singer? If uh, I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey, and very excited about it because I don't know where it's leading me. I just know that I'm going, and. Um, 
the future is looking pretty bright. Because, mm, I mean, you know, e everything that you have done, I mean, both musically and movie-wise, has been, has been a success, you know. I mean, I was sitting there last night thinking to myself, you know, what's the secret? I don't know what the secret is other than I'm not letting my life be ruled by fear. And um, nothing safe, nothing sacred. And uh, as I say, with you having ventured into things like film and doing uh, doing the solo career thing as well, um, in all of these fields, where would you say that you, you are happiest? Um, I, I think the best thing that I could do and, and I'm really enjoying movie making immensely but the greatest thing that I do is when I, when I finish a song I think it's it's the best of all the, the things I do it, writing the actual writing of a song gets me higher than performing it recording it doing a movie anything the actual writing what what was the fascination with 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 film was it a case of just an extension of what you what you were doing musically because it is a typical sort of follow on for a lot of people to do but it seems yeah. that you obviously went beyond that because you've uh, to say especially now with uh, Destination Anywhere I mean the album is almost a soundtrack to 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 the film mm -hmm. it is um, film initially was for selfish reasons uh, I wanted to write more songs and for movies went with because of the success of the Young Guns record and uh, and then it I used it as a as a tool to help me come out of my shell as a as a person though I could perform on a stage didn't mean I was at all comfortable in a social situation talking about anything other than music and uh, so you know when when the script started to dry up at least I was reading classic plays, I was finding out about playwrights, I was, you know, turned on to other books because of the scripts, um, and all those things led me to, to eventually get the bug to, to want to audition for a role, and then, you know, leading to me, me to Moonlight three years into acting lessons, and now three years after that, I'm still doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, as, as far as, I mean, people like myself, I mean, are, are people giving you the benefit of the doubt still? Um, because I mean, you've, you've proved yourself on I think on all levels, which sadly you have to do uh, in the in the world of media because people always sort of tend to pigeonhole you as just being a band musician. Yeah, um, sure. The uh, media, in, with regard to the films, are giving me much more of a break than the industry. Um, you know, the industry think it's just like a, a, a rich man's play toy. You know, they, they think it's just something I want to do between records. Until most recently, you know, now that I'm, I'm in the process of literally making my fifth film, the, my ride is downstairs waiting. Um, you know, now they, they really do see that, look, you're, he's willing to do indie movies, he's willing to do smaller roles, he'll do bigger, you know, whatever it takes. So I think that now I'm starting to, you know, gain their trust. But the uh, the media response has actually been critically, it's been great. Excellent, excellent. Because, as I say, you're going to re obviously release the movie, but as, as, as far as you're concerned, what is the plan with this once the album is actually released? Will you spend, spend some time with it? Uh, the Destination film, you mean? Or yeah. filming? Uh, the, uh, well, the, the, the album as well as the movie. The Destination Anywhere film is completed, and I hope to see it for the first time tonight or tomorrow morning. Right. But um, filming, you know, doing movies as I am right, like this moment, um, I hope to continue to make movies. You know, I, a, a lot of movies. I, I enjoy the medium. I'm, I'm thrilled by the experience. So I want to do a lot more of it. Um, doesn't mean I'm not going to tour anymore, but it doesn't mean I'm going to... I, I don't see myself doing 240 show tours anymore. You know, I think the idea of living out of a suitcase for 16 months, are, that's behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is probably uh, you towards the future, as, as I say, moving more towards that line. Uh, well, I, I could just see us doing 100 show tours. Hmm. You know, you could do a 100-show tour over the course of four or five months, still see the whole world, just play to bigger venues, 
and and still have a life you know what we can because of the popularity of the band i can do a hundred shows and play to a couple million people mm-hmm. you know and that i i'd rather do than uh than do 240 shows to play to almost as many people and have to take 16 months it just kills you physically mm-hmm. it's not that i'm bored with it or anything but it just it beats the hell out of you because mm-hmm. i was thinking you know i mean as i say based on on what you're currently doing um, as I say, band-wise, solo-wise, movie-wise, how, how have you managed to actually fit it all in that you that everything that that came out was credible, that you weren't rushing things and uh, you know set to very tight sort of schedules? Well, everything is somewhat rushed. You know, you just there's to be honest with you. You know, even though I said on this record, okay, I'm not going to let it go. Mm. You know, I, I didn't want to put it out till September. Mm. The record company heard it and they said, man, we got to have it in June. And I went, all right, you know, and the the destination film, like I said, I'm going to see tonight, but I didn't want it to be coming out for three months. Mm. But I think it's going to be up to snuff, even though it's ultimately things are, to be honest with you, they're always going to be a little rushed. No matter what you say, they're always going to be a little bit rushed. As long you as know, you, as, as long as you maintain that control to the point that you try to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My favorite I may. Mm. Um, I'm going to be putting this out on the show that I do uh, for College Radio, and um, I was wondering if you could just do a short ID for me. Sure. Um, the name of the show is the Cutting Edge, so you can go wild sure. with that whenever you're ready. Hi, this is John Bon Jovi, and you got me on your radio. This is The Cutting Edge. Thank you very much, sir. As I say, congratulations. Um, okay, I've, Jason. I've, I've heard the two, well, the, the three edits. Um, of, of the three, which one uh, would you say is the, the better of, of, the, of the three? Oh, well, I obviously like the album version, but if you're going to play an edit, the longer of the two is better. Uh-huh, I thought you might say that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. John, thanks very much for your time. Okay, bud. And congratulations. Take care. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye.